Okay, so uh, I already have some things running. Once again, I have to have them running uh, beforehand to uh, be able to record audio while I'm showing you this audio stuff because I need everything connected. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a program called Super Looper, and what we're going to do with it is make a lot of noise because it's a uh, live recording looping uh, application, and I have no rhythm. So I can't time my loops, but I wanted to show you this application for you musicians out there that want to do some live performances and want to set up a, a loop recorder that you can uh, uh, control with a pedal or a press of a button. So that's what we're going to do today. First things first, always we start up Jack D and then open up Jack Control. And then we started up Super Looper by typing Super Looper at the command line. And Super Looper should be in your repository. It's just aptitude, install, Super Looper, or use uh, uh, Synaptic or whatever your package manager is. Once that's up and running, you can go to your menu and find Super Looper, which I have open here. And uh, so that's the GUI. This is the server back here running in the terminal. And then this is the application that you can manipulate. And then we're going to open up ZYN add sub effect. Now you don't have to use this. This you can link it with any input, your microphone input. So if you have a guitar hooked up and you want to do some guitar loops, I've seen some musicians do that. They they you know play a loop and then play over the loop, and that's basically what we're going to do today. Except for, like I said, I have no talent in this aspect of keeping a rhythm. That's why I use computers to create beats normally. Anyway, uh, we have this open. I'm going to open up my connection window in the Jack beat here. And, like I said, I already have stuff set up, but this is what you need to do. Initially, ZYN add sub effect is connected to system. Click on both those, click disconnect. Then, click on ZYN add sub effect over here and super looper, and click connect. Now, if you're going to be connecting your microphone, you're going to want to click system and super loop over here to connect. So, whatever input you want to loop record from, you connect through here, from here, to super looper. Uh, then... Uh, we're going to connect Super Looper to System because by default it's not. Ignore the R-Door connections because that's just what I'm using to record audio for the video here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my ALSA or ELSA and I'm going to connect my keyboard to ZYN Ed Sub Effect. Uh, and I am also going to connect it to Super Looper. That way I can control Super Looper with my MIDI input device, whether it be a pedal, knobs, or even a key press on the keyboard and we'll show you that now um, this is super looper and I'm just gonna go over the very basics of it today uh, I'm gonna go down here to preferences per first and I'm gonna go over to MIDI bindings uh, so you can see what's going on when I'm connecting to MIDI stuff now I can press record here and start playing and then when I press record again it loops it but another thing I can do is I can right click it and click MIDI bindings and since my MIDI keyboard is hooked up through here or any MIDI device to Super Looper now I can adjust I can set a button knob or key on my keyboard to activate that so now that I've right clicked that and click learn MIDI binding I can hit I'm gonna hit the C key on my keyboard and you can see that it learned it now next time I hit that C key it starts recording and when I let go it stops recording uh, I can add a new loop, either mono or stereo here. I'll add a stereo one. Then I'm going to come up here. Now you can set different keys or buttons for each one of these. So you can see I can hit learn MIDI binding here and I will hit a higher C note. And you see every time I hit that key it either starts or stops recording. So I can hit uh, C followed by a few other keys. Now, you may want to, after you record your loop, clear this out so you don't accidentally hit that key again and start recording over a previous loop. That's just if you're using keys. At the same time, I'll add another loop here. And I'm going to change my instrument here. I'll just grab uh, noise. So some noises there and um, I'm going to show you I can learn MIDI here and instead of hitting a key I'm going to move a slider 
So now you can see when I move my slider up, it starts recording. When I move it down, it turns it off. So I can turn that up. Turn it down. Now, normally, I guess, if you're working with the keyboard, you want to use a key press. But if you're using an input like a microphone or a guitar input, you're going to want to use a button or a slider. So you can, or even better yet, if you have a pedal, which I don't, but I could get one for my keyboard. Set that so I can hit the pedal, play whether on my guitar, hit the pedal again to start the loop. Um, so you're seeing this is very easy to use. Another thing we can do is we can change the rate. We can do half the rate on something. Or double the rate. Or we can manually change it like this up to four times the speed. You can do scratching where you can control it with the mouse. And you can reverse it. So, this is just a quick look at this application. Like I said, I'm not really talented enough to put it to good use, but I know uh, there's a lot of mus musicians out there who may look into buying, I've seen, and I'm sure they're expensive, I haven't really looked, a loop recorder or pedal or just a separate device where if you already have a MIDI input or even don't even need a MIDI input, just it's more helpful. If you have a laptop or a computer, you hook your, your microphone up or whatever and you don't have to pay any extra money for an extra device. You have an application here and you can just keep on adding to these loops. Now you can also uh, you know, save the session. And another thing over here in the mini bindings, let's say you set up a bunch of different, because it's not just the record button, I can set up, uh, you know, I can right click here and hit learn MIDI, and I can move a slider up and down, and it learns, you can see it recorded here, what slider I used for that, uh, that slider, virtual slider. Uh, and you can save uh, what it is, you know, your, your session here, the key bindings. So, you just click save there and save it. So you can save your settings and bring these loops back up later and record them out. Or, like I said, mostly you probably use this for a live performance, but you can use it for recordings too. And, uh, I mean, it's just that simple. This is just uh, one uh, loop recorder they have uh, for Linux that's free and open source. Like I said, it's in your repositories. And hopefully, and you can mute these when they get annoying because you're untalented like me, or you're really talented, and you're going to listen to it all the time. Anyway, that is uh, Super Looper, and it's spelt S-O-O-P-E-R-L-O-P-E-R. -E -E um, very simple to use, and I hope that you uh, play with it a little bit. So, have a great day. Thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. The link is in the description for more video tutorials like this. And, and please uh, rate this video and comment. Send me any questions. I'll do my best to answer uh, whatever I can. So have a great day.